my God. Oh, dear God, what has Eve seen? Sheridan! Something's wrong, Sheridan. I'll take care of it. What has Alistair done? Oh, my God. She looks terrible. What have you done to her? I can assure you my patient is quite fine. Fine? She looks like she's half dead. And, and why is she in restraints? What kind of psychotherapy have you been subjecting her to? I hardly owe you an explanation, Dr. Russell. In case you've forgotten, I am head of psychiatry at this hospital. My methods are entirely appropriate, sound, and moreover, none of your business. Oh, and just for the record, I have not received one word of complaint from the patient's husband or her father. She's so pale. Why is she unconscious? What the hell are you done to her this time, Ackland? Nobody told me that her treatment involved restraints. Well, Dr. Acklin, it looks like the patient's husband is not quite as on board with your dubious therapy methods as you claim. Now, do you believe me, Eve? This is why I had to get you down here tonight. I want the patient transferred out of the psychiatric ward immediately. I'm afraid that's impossible without consent of the next kin. Tell him, Antonio. Tell him you want Sheridan transferred out of here immediately so she doesn't have to undergo any more of this guy's treatments. Tell him, damn it. Antonio, if you love Sheridan half as much as you say you do, then get her out of this damn torture chamber. At least you can go now. I'll take care of my wife. Oh, and you've done a hell of a job of it so far, haven't you? I'm not leaving her here like this. No, Mas, this is not the time nor the place for you two to argue. Luis, your mother is right. Just step aside. Come on, step aside. At this point in time, Antonio is the only person who's responsible for Sheridan's care. I'm not leaving Sheridan's side. Luis, do it for Sheridan. All right. I'm telling you, Antonio, you get Sheridan out of here. This isn't right. Her condition is deplorable. When we get Sheridan out of the psychiatric department, I will oversee her care. Or who, who said she's leaving the psych ward? I mean, under whose authority do you propose such a move? I've been her doctor for years. Well, I hate to pull rank, Dr. Russell, but I'm also her physician, and you have no jurisdiction over my patients or their treatment programs. This woman was brought to me because she needs help finding her way back to reality. Yeah, and the people who love her can help her do that. Would that it were that simple, Dr. Russell. The woman still believes that her dead child is alive. This is a severe delusion that we've been working on very intensively. Huh. How? By practically killing her? <laughs> I don't see the need for wild exaggeration from a professional, Dr. Russell. Are you trying to scare the family? What kind of treatment have you been giving her? Don't even ask him, all right? You just get her the hell out of here. Doctor, she looks a hell of a lot worse than when I first admitted her. That's true. And that's exactly why I didn't want any of you seeing her quite yet. I realized that to a layman's eyes, it could seem that your wife's condition is deteriorated. I am hardly a layman, Dr. Ackland. Which is exactly why you of all people should not make snap judgments without an entire picture of the situation, Dr. Russell. I implore you, please do not listen to your brother or Dr. Russell's overly emotional admonitions. Your wife's therapy is progressing very well. Yeah, but this is just so hard to see. Fair enough, but you can take my word for it. And please, I have to warn you, if her therapy is interrupted, as is being suggested, she could suffer a relapse, leaving her more confused than she was when she was brought in here. So I don't, I don't buy that for a second. Well, then, it's good that I'm physician in charge of the case then, isn't it, Dr. Russell, rather than you. If your wife is taken from my care, she may never recover, much less realize that her baby is gone, or some of the other facts in her life, where she lives, who she is, even who she's married to. All I want is for her to have some quiet time away from your brother so she can come to her senses on her own. Mark my words, when it's time for her release, it's you she'll come home to, not your disloyal, manipulative brother. Sheridan will remain in Dr. Ackland's care. Antonio, what? What the hell is wrong with you? What's important here is not any of our feelings, but Sheridan's well-being. So if this is the best way for her to recover, then she will remain in Dr. Ackland's care. 
is Mrs. Winthrop. The doctor says you can go home tonight. Hey. Oh, that is wonderful. I will get dressed right away, I then. I can't wait to get you back home. Oh, me neither. But, honey, there's uh, just one stop I would like to make along the way, okay? Sure, where to? It's a surprise. Just trust me. Oh, uh, Okay, but if it has anything to do with Beth Wallace, I am... Nope, not this time. But you have to admit, there's definitely something a little strange about her. Honey, honestly, I've never noticed it. I'm, I'm sorry, but every time I've seen her, she's been perfectly normal, whether in the book cafe or in any social situation. Ethan, she tried to kill me more than once. You have no proof of that. Not yet, but I intend to get it. And listen to me, okay? It all makes sense if you just accept the premise that the baby that Beth is trying to pass off as hers and Louise's is really Sheridan's. Honey, as much as I love Sheridan, I don't buy it. Neither does Luis. And frankly, I'm surprised that you're giving Sheridan's fantasy any credence whatsoever. Just think about it, okay? Both babies were presumably born at the same time. Nobody's ever found the body of Sheridan's infant. And more than that, Beth's baby has bonded in the most incredible way to Sheridan and vice versa. He won't even eat unless she's nursing him. Now, how do you explain that? I don't know. I'm a lawyer. I'm not a doctor. If Beth is hiding something about her baby, then I intend to find out what it is, which is why my appointment with Dr. Culver is so important. Okay? Okay. So, would you mind getting me my coat? I think it's uh, in a closet in the hall or something. No problem. Thank you. I can't envision anything more impossible or tragic. Knowing that choosing one man will surely break the heart of the other. No wonder she became so drained and finally just gave up. She couldn't deal with the untenable situation for even one more day. You know, people who say that you can't love more than one person at a time are wrong. They're just wrong. She's coming too. Thank goodness. Antonio, please tell Dr. Ackland that you want this therapy stopped. Let me take her back into the hospital proper and, and oversee her care and monitor her closely myself. Antonio's already made his decision, Dr. Russell. It's not too late for him to change his mind. Antonio, listen to me. And nobody but you knows what your real motives are. But let me ask you a question. If Luis were not part of the mix, and if you weren't concerned about who Sheridan would choose when she regained consciousness, what would you do to help Sheridan then? Antonio, if you're not going to listen to me, then listen to Dr. Russell. Luis, let your brother make up his own mind. Antonio, I honestly think it's the best thing for Sheridan. All right, then just do it. Just take her to a regular hospital. I just want her to get well. Thank you, Antonio. You're doing the right thing. Doing the right thing for Sheridan, not for you, Luis. This is insane. This woman should not be removed from psychiatric care. I intend to file a complaint with the Medical Review Board. Could you do that, Dr. Ackland? Because I intend to take photos of your patient in her present state. I'm sure the board would be more than interested to see them. Mr. Lopez Fitzgerald, I implore you. Forget about it. From now on, Sheridan is in Dr. Russell's care. How long has she been under? Well, it's very hard for me to tell. She's been very heavily sedated, so I, I think it'll be a few hours, maybe, maybe even all through the night before she's totally conscious. I'll be right here by her side. So will I. No, you won't. Okay, let's not do this. And when Sheridan is awake, I intend to put an end to this unbearable situation. How, Eve? When Sheridan's awake, you will both be in her room, and I will ask her to make a choice between you. That way we can put an end to all the questions and all the tension that everybody has been suffering through, especially Sheridan. Are you both in agreement with that? Yeah. I am her husband. You know, a woman's heart is a very delicate thing. 
She often loves so much that she doesn't handle it very well. And then she just has to pray that she's making the right decision. Sheridan doesn't need everyone crowding around her while we're trying to get her settled. He's right. Everyone should just wait out here. I don't want Sheridan to feel overwhelmed. I promise you no one's ever going to keep us apart again. Uh... That's right. I'm right here, Sheridan. Luis, mijo, we've been here long enough. Antonio could come back any minute. So what? Sheridan will want me here when she wakes up. Luis, please, you will see her soon enough. Eve doesn't want you and Antonio fighting in front of her anymore. All right. I'll leave, okay? But for Sheridan's sake, I don't give a damn about what Antonio thinks. He's got to get used to the fact that I'm not spending the rest of my life with Sheridan. Come, hurry. God, it's too late. Luis, your brother's coming. Now you have to hide before he sees you in oh, here. Oh, come on, it's ridiculous. I'm not gonna act like I'm doing something wrong here. Please, if Antonio sees you in here, you know you are going to have an ugly confrontation. Por favor, Luis. Dr. Russell asked me to have you sign these papers regarding your wife's transfer to this floor. Sure. Luis, let's go before he sees you in here. All right, all right. I'm telling you, I don't like all this sneaking around. <laughs> 